How strong is Ganondorf? This is a question that people have been proposing since the dawn of Ocarina of Time, since Ganondorf, as the wielder of the Triforce of Power, is naturally extraordinarily proficient at breaking stuff over his knees. Now, there are many ways of analyzing this topic. I could be a massive nerd and meticulously comb through the entirety of the Zelda timeline and evaluating which incarnation of Ganon is which and determining if they're actually worthy of being pinned up against each other in terms of power progression. Or, I could not, I could just not do that and instead focus on this one single most relevant Ganondorf because that's who the most people are probably thinking about right now. Yeah, I think I'm uh, I think I'm gonna go with the second option. The main issue of analyzing just how powerful this iteration of Ganondorf is mostly lies in just how little we get to see him during the course of the game. Outside of cutscenes and the story implications of him beating off a lot of the stages, we just beating off. Oh my god, did I just say? Outside of the story implications of him giving the other stages a run for the money, we never really see any visual representation of how powerful he truly is that's not within the bounds of a boss fight. And anybody who's familiar with the Zelda series knows that the boss battles aren't exactly a good visual representation of what bosses are truly capable of. Looking at you, Tennis Ball Ganon! Fortunately for us though, unlike many of Zelda's, Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild have a means for us to measure how powerful bosses are thanks to the long-hated durability system. So here's the plan. By deducing how many hits it takes Ganon to break any given item, we can, in theory, figure out just how powerful the punches he's throwing are. This question should be simple as a formula, right? All you have to do is divide the amount of hits it takes by how much durability his shield has. Bada bing, bada boom, now you know how strong he is. Is. But you, my friend, are wrong because it's not that simple and it never will be. We're trying to find a measurable means of gauging just how powerful this guy is. And while yes, by using that formula, we can get a number, we're not going to know what that number means in the grand scheme of things unless we answer some basic questions first. So here's the situation. We got three questions in front of us that we got to answer first. For starters, what item are we picking for this experiment and what's that item's durability? Secondly, how many punches does it take? Ganon to break the item of our choice? And thirdly, how does the durability translate to a comparable means of damage? So the first two questions aren't actually that hard to answer, so let's start with those. The shield we're going to be using for this experiment is the Hylian Shield Durability Up Plus variant. I feel like this is a pretty obvious choice for many people, but for those of you who aren't in the know, let me catch you up to speed real quick. The Hylian Shield is by and large the single most durable item in the entirety of Tears of the Kingdom, and it's not even a contest. But for context, the Hylian Shield and the Abosa's Daybreaker Shield are the top two best shields in the game. The Hylian Shield has a durability of 800 and the Abosa's Daybreaker Shield has a durability of 60. Yeah, it's it's that night and day. This is made all the better once you realize the Abosa's Shield is an item that can only be crafted and therefore cannot have a modifier, meaning the Hylian Shield, which can have a modifier, is just all the more better. Speaking of modifiers, let's talk about how those are going to affect our Hylian shield. The durability modifier in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is not as simple as a flat percentage slapped onto an item. However, thanks to excessive data scraping from the Breath of the Wild community, we know that the durability modifier for the Hylian shield specifically adds 360 points of durability. This would mean our final Hylian shield with a durability of way too fucking much has a total of 1160 durability. Oh, but it's not that easy because why would it be no you see because we still forgot to take something very important into account that of course being how does fusing items together affect their durability specifically in regards to shields and the short answer to that question is they don't and i can even prove it in order to test this theory i went out and gathered two old wooden shields one i fused a radiant shield to and the other i just left as is for those who don't know jumping on a shield and initiating the shield surf takes away a couple points of durability so in order to test this theory, I simply did that until the shields broke. And what do you know, they both broke after a total of 12 jumps. Using this admittedly small sample size, we can deduce that shields do not benefit in terms of durability when it comes to fusing. This means our Hylian shield with a durability up plus modifier is the single highest durability item we can get in the entire game. So now that we know how much it takes to break it, we need to figure out how long it takes Ganon specifically to break it. So in order to do this, I brought a fresh Hylian shield into the boss fight and counted how many times he slapped it before it shattered before my eyes.
In total, Ganondorf hit my Hylian shield 33 times. There was one time where he hit me with a club, and another time he hit me with magic, but for the most part, these were all sword-based strikes. Now, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to assume that the power of each of these strikes are equal across the board, even though they probably aren't. I'm aware that that's not a very professional way of going about analytical data, but did you really expect anything less from a channel with 450 subscribers? So this section was me asking you guys to subscribe before, but seeing as this is an analytical video let me pull up some analytics real quick so you know how those youtubers will say only a small percentage of my audience is subscribed but it's like some huge number like 40 percent or 30 percent well this video took me and my free software so long to make without breaking down that youtube finally graciously gave me my statistics and with that in mind know that only a small percentage of you guys are subscribed roughly uh <laughs> 2.7 percent like don't get me wrong i don't think my content's great either but like <laughs> <laughs> Come on guys, would it kill you to hit that funky red button or what? Alright, so we finished the shameless promotion, we determined how many hits it takes Ganon to break the shield, and we figured out how much durability our shield's going to have, which means there's only one more thing we need to figure out. And that's how much force can be put on the shield per point of durability. In order to make sure we get the most generous number possible, I decided to use the Guardian Laser Blast from Breath of the Wild, because something tells me a beam of concentrated plasma going at near the speed of light is probably going to be doing more damage than some random fuck off goblin slapping me in the face with a hammer. That being, an unmodified Hylian shield can take a grand total of 27 guardian laser blasts before ultimately shattering. So it's a simple solution, right? 800 divided by 27 gives us how much damage a single guardian laser beam does, but you're wrong again! You are wrong! again and let me tell you why. The entire time I've been recording this video I've neglected telling you guys about the shield guard stat which absorbs all incoming damage on the shield with the exception of one point unless the damage being inflicted on it is higher than the shield guard stat. In the case of the Hylian shield this means unless an attack is doing 92 damage nothing will ever do more than one point of durability to the shield. So since the shield was hit a total of 27 times and the shield guard stat is 90 we need to multiply 27 by 90 and add that to 800 to get how much damage the guardian lasers were doing over the shield's lifetime. 90 times 27 gives us 2430, add that to 800 and that gives us 3230 total durability being taken from the shield. Divide 3230 by 27 and that gives us how much damage is being inflicted by a single guardian laser. All of this work shows us that a single guardian laser is doing 119.6 damage per shot but we're going to go ahead and round that up to a nice even 120. With this, all we need to do now is figure out how much energy it would take to create a laser in real life of a similar scope and scale, and from there we can determine how much damage is being done per point of durability. Fortunately for humanity, and unfortunately for us, laser rifles aren't something that exists in real life unless we're talking about the purely hypothetical. However, there actually is something that exists in the real world that's not only extraordinarily similar, but extensively studied. I'm of course referring to the humble lightning bolt. For those who weren't paying attention in the fifth grade, each individual lightning bolt is effectively just a beam of superheated plasma flying through the air with over 300 million volts of electricity per lightning strike. And this is remarkably similar to a guardian laser blast, meaning we can assume that each guardian laser blast has an energy output of about a billion joules. Divide 1 billion by 120 and we get how much joules of energy a single point on the Hylian shield can take, and from there we can convert it to any metric we want, such as PSI. And now, now with all of that math out of the way, we can assume that a single point of durability on the Hylian shield in a best case scenario can tank 8,333,333 joules of energy. Now is this number perfect? Absolutely fucking not, no, of course it's not, because I refuse to believe these Bokoblins are hitting with anywhere near that amount. But as I said in the beginning of this video, we're trying to be as generous as possible, so let's just assume that this specifically applies to Guardians and the Demon King himself. Now that we've answered all three of our questions, we can finally run the numbers and figure out how much damage he's doing with a single swing. First of all, we need to figure out how much damage was negated by the Shield Guard by taking 33 and multiplying that by 90, which gives us 2,970 points of durability. Next, 
next we need to take the number of times Ganondorf hit the shield and divide that by the total durability in order to get the amount of damage he was doing with each swing after the effects of the shield guard were negated. In doing this we get 35.15 repeated but we're going to go ahead and round that up to 36. Add 36 to 90 and that tells us with each strike Ganon is theoretically doing 126 points of durability meaning each swing of his arm is stronger than a lightning bolt. But after all of that work I'm just not going to sit here and settle on a conclusion that vague. I want to know specifics. How much PSI is in every swing of his sword? To do this all we have to do is take our 8.3 repeated million and multiply that by 126. This in turn gives us a total energy output in joules of each one of Ganon's strikes being a whopping 1 billion 50 million joules of energy. Or if you want to put that in PSI that is 9.3 billion pounds per square inch. Now do keep in mind these numbers are very flexible. I'm sure if you were to use a wooden shield and compare it to a Bacoblin strike you would find a much much weaker number but like I said trying to be generous. Anyway that was the point of this video. If you enjoyed it lightning strike that subscribe button. Until next time this is Solo signing off. Later nerds.